Assalamu alaikum guys welcome to veterinary studies youtube channel this is a series of lectures on veterinary anatomy in last lecture our topic was osteology and we have discussed about the composition structure functions and types of bones now question arises how these bones are developed and formed in animal body Today is our topic is osteogenesis or ossification. Before going to our topic, I want to tell you about the difference between growth and development to better understand the process of osteogenesis or ossification. Development means formation. In medical sciences, it is concerned with the embryonic life. So the changes which are take places in an embryonic life are included in development whereas growth means increase in the length and the size so the increase in the length and size of animal body or the part of an animal body are included in growth now what is embryonic life and fetal life the length of the gestation of animal is divided into three phases number one zygote phase number two embryonic phase and number three fetal phase zygote phase it is about the first two weeks of gestation in this phase zygote is formed by the fusion of sperm and ova which transform into morula and further develop into blastula blastocyst and blastocyst is developed into embryo embryo phase it starts from the 11th day to 56th day of gestation. At this stage, organogenesis takes place, which means there is the development of different organs of animal body. Similarly, osteogenesis is a part of organogenesis. Third one is fetal life. It starts after embryonic phase up to the birth of an animal. In this stage, growth and development of embryo takes place. This is the picture of an embryo. There are three layers of embryo, endoderm, mesoderm and ectoderm. Different systems or different organs are developed from these three layers like digestive system, liver, pancreas, inner layers of lungs are developed from the endoderm circulatory system lungs skeletal system and muscular system are developed from the mesoderm osteogenesis or ossification osteo means bone genesis means formation or development bone development is called osteogenesis and the process of bone development is called ossification we called it osteogenesis because the development of bone start at embryonic life and we called it ossification because it is a continuous process which starts from embryonic life to the maturity of animal bones are the mesodermal origin as we have discussed in our last slide normally bones continuously break and build throughout the life of animal it means bone growth is a balance between the action of osteoclast and osteoblast. Now what are osteoclast and osteoblasts? Osteoclasts are the phagocytic cells that eat a bony tissue from medullary cavity of bones. Osteoblasts are immature bone cells that produce bony tissue. Osteocytes are the mature osteoblasts that maintain the bone. So it means osteoclasts continuously break the bony tissue whereas osteoblasts continuously build or heal the bony tissue. So the bone growth is a balance between these two cells. Bones are developed from embryo skeleton. Embryo skeleton includes fibrous tissue and cartilages. Fibrous tissue develop a flayed bones or membranous bones by the process of intramembranous ossification. Flayed bones includes bones of a skull, clavicle and pelvis bones. Whereas from cartilage, long bones are developed by the process of chondral ossification. Chondral ossification includes perichondral ossification and endochondral ossification. 
Perichondral ossification. As the name denotes us that peri means around, chondral means cartilaginous. So the periosteum or outer surfaces and parts of a bones are developed by perichondral ossification. Whereas endochondral means inner or central part. So the central part and medullary cavity is developed by endochondral ossification. Types of ossification. There are two types of ossification. Intramembranous ossification and chondral ossification. Intramembranous ossification. It is the formation of bone from the connective tissue membranes. In this type of ossification, mesenchymal tissues of embryo transform into the bones. It forms a membranous bones or flat bones which includes bones of the skull, mandibles and pelvis bones. Every bone have a center from which bone formation starts. We call it center of ossification. So the membranous bones begin from the center toward the periphery of the future bone. If we see in the picture cells from cranial neural crest, somites and mesodermal layer of an embryo differentiate into a mesenchymal cells. These mesenchymal cells condense to form flat bone by the intramembranous ossification. Now how bones are developed by intramembranous ossification? An intramembranous ossification multipotent stem cells of an embryo transform into undifferentiated mesenchymal cells. These mesenchymal cells are developed into a proto-osteoblasts which are the precursor of osteoblast and they are differentiated into a osteoblast. Osteoblasts produce an organic mineral matrix and surrounded by a non-calcified ground substance called osteoid which is the unit of bone. Osteoblasts are mineralized by calcium, magnesium and phosphorus by the action of alkaline phosphatase enzyme which lead to bone formation. After the formation of bony tissue a network of spicules trabeculae forms which are thicken coalescence and separated from adjacent bony tissue by a fibrous tissue if you see in the picture a multipotent stem cells of a cranial neural crest somites and mesodermal layer of an embryo differentiate into a mesenchymal cells these mesenchymal cells condense to form condensed mesenchyme. Mesenchymal cells develop into osteoblasts and these osteoblasts are surrounded and mineralized by ground substance and minerals to form bones. When these osteoblasts are surrounded by ground substance and minerals they are called osteocytes and they form a unit called osteoid. After the formation of a bony tissue, canalicular network is formed which include spicules, trabeculae and the bone, which is the actual structure of a bone. Similarly, in this short clip, mesenchymal cells of an embryo transform into a osteoblast series of a different cells. Followed by these osteoblasts are surrounded by ground substances of a fibrous connective tissue and mineralized by calcium and other minerals by the action of alkaline phosphatase enzyme and this lead to formation of a bone which having osteocytes, lacunae and other bony structures. Now osteoid or osteoid consists of 95% of a type 1 collagen fiber and 5% other components. Other components include glycosaminoglycan, proteoglycan, chondroitin 4 sulfate, chondroitin 6 sulfate, keratin sulfate, and bone proteins, which include osteonectin and osteocalcin. Vitamin C is required for the production of bone or osteoid. Within 8 to 10 days, osteoid transform into a bony matrix called osein.
This conversion is controlled by growth hormone and vitamin D. Another type of ossification is chondral ossification. As the name denotes us, chondra means cartilage. So it is the process of bone development from the cartilaginous tissue. Chondral ossification provides the basis for the longitudinal growth of the bones. It means long bones such as femur, humerus are developed by chondral ossification. Similarly, chondral ossification have a center of ossification from where the ossification starts. There are three primary centers of ossification in typically long bone. One at diaphysis at the shaft of the bone which act as the primary site of ossification and one at each epiphysis. So there are two epiphyses in a long bones. So each epiphysis have center of ossification which act as the secondary site of ossification. Chondral ossification is divided into two types, perichondral ossification and endochondral ossification. In perichondral ossification, external covering or outer parts of the bones are formed, which means periosteum is developed by perichondral ossification. Perichondral ossification is similar to the intramembranous ossification which means the process of bone formation by perichondral ossification and intramembranous ossification is similar. The formation of periosteum mechanically inhibit the metabolism of a hyaline cartilage which is the precursor of long bone essentially forcing calcification of the cartilage matrix. Endochondral ossification in this, there is a formation of central parts of the bone and medullary cavity in the shaft of the bones are formed. In endochondral ossification, chondroblasts of perichondrium differentiate into a osteoblast at the primary site of ossification which means at the diaphysis of the bone. Osteoblasts also reach at the medullary cavity through the blood vessel and begin inside to build a bony tissue. This lead to transformation of the soft tissue such as hyaline cartilage into a bony tissue at the middle of the diaphysis followed by at the both epiphysis result in the formation of tubular bony sheath. This is the picture of chondral ossification and it shows that the process of osteogenesis starts at the ninth week of the pregnancy or the gestation in which a mesenchymal cells are differentiated into the hyaline cartilage which act as a bone model of the future bone and it is shown in the light blue color. We can differentiate this hyaline cartilage with other type of a hyaline cartilage by chondroblasts which are trapped by lacunae and perichondrium surround the bone model. As we have discussed earlier, the first center of ossification of a long bone is at the center of diaphysis, which is the primary site of ossification in a long bones, where bone collar is formed around the hyaline cartilage. The extending periosteal collar inhibits the metabolism of this hyaline cartilage, result in the mineralization of the cartilage matrix. Cartilage calcify at the center of the diaphysis and this lead to formation of the cavities at the diaphysis. The hyaline cartilage will be the model of the future bone and perichondrium is formed around the hyaline cartilage. The periosteal bud invades the internal cavities and spongy bone is formed. How it happens? The process of ossification moves from the center of the bones toward the extremities. At the same time, cartilage is invaded by the blood vessels and extending the periosteal collar. Osteoblasts are provided by the blood vessel and start to form a new bone after they reach at the medullary cavity. The continuous process of the destruction and reconstruction of a bony matrix by the action of the osteoclast and osteoblast lead to the formation of 
spongy texture of a bone in which the cavities finally unite to form the primary medullary cavity. At this stage, capillaries penetrate the cartilage perichondrium into a periosteum by which osteoblasts are provided by these blood vessels or capillaries to start the formation of new bones, which turn into a spongy bone. At the center of the diaphysis, continuously ossify the hyaline cartilage and cartilage chondrocytes continue to grow at the end of the bone, which lead to develop the secondary ossification center. Secondary ossification center at the both epiphysis and the diaphysis elongate the bone and form the medullary cavity. Ossification takes place at their center which will continue to grow the bone and the process will continue until the ossification is completed. Hyaline cartilage is remain at the epiphyseal plate and articular cartilage. Hyaline cartilage which will remain at the epiphyseal growth plate ossify until maturity to increase the length of the long bones. When the animal becomes adult, the epiphyseal plates will completely ossify. No hyaline cartilage remain at the epiphysis of the long bone and no further increase in the length of the bone is possible. If you see the time period of the osteogenesis, from the embryonic life to the birth, the development of bone occurs from the hyaline cartilage to the secondary ossification. After birth, the childhood growth of the bone at the epiphyseal plate continue until maturity to increase the length of the bones. Continue until maturity to increase the length of the bones. Woven and lamellar bone. The bones which are developed in an embryonic life are called woven bones. These bones are replaced after birth by a more complex lamellar bones. Lamellar bones. It is characterized by collagen fiber which are arranged in a parallel concentric layers called lamellae. Lamellary bones are the most common form of long bones in animals. If we see in the picture of woven bones and lamellary bone, lamellary bone have a concentric rings. And this is the structure of bone which we have discussed in our last lecture. Formation of marrows. Marrows means spaces or the cavities which are found in the bones which are used for the hemopoiesis or storage of the fates. Primary marrow formed by the shrinking and disappearing the cartilage cell which are occupied by osteogenic tissues. The calcified cartilage is broken down and absorbed through the osteoclast cell of the bones which are replaced by osteoblasts. Osteoclasts also cause absorption of a primitive bone and produce marrow cavity in the shaft bones. Destruction of the central part and formation of subperiosteal bone continue until the shaft of the bone has completed its growth. In the late stage of the fatal development, the secondary multi-chambered medullary cavity developed by the transformation of the soft tissue into a hemopoietic tissue, the red bone marrow, which is responsible for the production of the blood cells such as WBCs, RBCs and platelets. If we see in this picture, the brownish color shows the bone marrow where the blood cells are formed. But as the animal grows, the bones are increased in the length and the formation of medullary cavity lead to the deposition of the fat in the long bones which is shown in the yellow color. In adult animals, the red marrow of the diaphysis is gradually replaced by fat followed by into the gelatinous marrow. The bone marrow of the epiphysis however remain hemopoietic organ throughout the life. Similarly, this picture shows that in early life, bone marrow is functional in all the flat and long bones. But as the animal or human grows, bone marrow of the long bone is replaced by the fat, later by the gelatinous marrow. But the bone marrow of the flat bones and at the epiphysis of the long bone remain active throughout the life. This is all about osteogenesis or ossification. If you like this lecture, press like button. 
If you want a latest update regarding my YouTube channel, press bell icon and don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.